Welcome to worship here at Braddock Street United Methodist Church. We're so glad you're here. Here at Braddock Street, we seek to be followers of Jesus who love God and worship, love others in small groups, and who serve the world in mission. Welcome to everybody online as well. We're glad you're here. Please say hello. Uh, let us know that you're with us. We like to see your names pop up. I'll be checking Facebook during the service a little bit. If you're new here in the room, there's a green card in the pew in front of you. We'd like for you to share some contact information. Just put it in the offering plate later just so we can have a chance to get to know you a little bit later on. Uh, right now, we just, we're going to continue in worship as we sing together, Made to Worship.
with Lindsay to read our morning scripture. Today's scripture comes from the book of Mark, chapter 3, verses 21 through 35. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him. For people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebub, and by the ruler of the demons he cast out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in par parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. But his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside, asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The word of God for the people of God. Well, good morning, everybody. It is so wonderful to see you here and see you with your moms and your dads and your grandparents and all the people who love you. And I brought something to show you today. Do you know what this is? You do? Flashlight. Flashlight. Right. Let's turn it on. Wait a minute. Is it working? It's not working. What do you think it might need? Oh, batteries. Let's see what happens. I did, didn't I, Charlie? I took the batteries out because I wanted you to understand a very simple lesson in just a moment. So we know that the batteries provide power, right? And they make the light turn on, right? Real simple. Did you hear Jesus talking about his family? And he said, who are my family? It's those who do the will of God. And that's simply loving people the same way that God loves us in Jesus Christ unconditionally just pouring out love it's what makes everything go so your families your moms and dads your grandparents and everybody that that love you so much notice that's what makes the family work and you can love moms and dads and everybody and your friends too in the same way it's real simple without love doesn't work without batteries the flashlight doesn't work either right okay let's pray to, pray together Dear God, thank you for loving us just like the way Jesus does. Thank you for accepting us and help us to love and accept others in the same way. Amen. And now you can go back to moms and dads or you can go with Miss Patty and Jeanette to Children's Church. While the kids are moving about um, I can introduce a friend of ours Bob Brock a member of the church we are now in a worship series called balance we're gonna be looking at the different areas of our lives that need balance and on the final Sunday of October October 29 we'll be having what we call here our commitment Sunday where all of everybody in our church uh, makes a commitment their estimate of giving for the next year uh, first we want to hear from Bob Brock My name is Bob Brock. I am uh, the chair of the uh, church council and have been the chair for the last three years. My very favorite part about Braddock Street Church are the small groups. When my wife, Nina, and I were looking for churches, uh, this is one of the considerations we had. Uh, we were concerned with Braddock Street because it was so big, so many people. But one thing that uh, we did was first became involved in a small group. And uh, that was the best thing we ever did. And uh, we've been involved in several different small groups and getting to know the people in those groups are wonderful. We may not know everyone in the entire church, but we know the people in the small groups, and we've gotten to know them, and we've gotten to know other people through them. And it has been just wonderful and, and joyous. 
to keep good balance in my life, uh, basically um, I do a number of things. So uh, first of all, I like to spend time with my grandkids, and um, I also like scuba diving. And I've gotten my grandkids involved in scuba diving. But also, I, I enjoy uh, working uh, with our church and on committees in our church and uh, other other nonprofits in in the, our community. I'm on the board of directors for CCAP. Um, been working with the church council for a number of years and all this is so worthwhile and uh, it, it just intermeshes uh, within itself. What I've learned from giving my time and money, mostly it's my, my time that has benefited me. Um, I, I do a lot of different things. Um, I'm a retired attorney and I, I like to um, uh, dabble uh, in the law and, and use that to help the church and uh, to help us uh, uh, fulfill our responsibilities and duties, and I get great pleasure from that. Uh, I also use my time uh, in other uh, nonprofits in, in, in the community uh, to help them and to have, help them carry out their mission and, and improve their situations, but um, it always comes back to uh, interaction with people. It's very important. Well, as a result of my giving to Braddock Street Church, uh, some of the things I've actually seen in the community, um, again, at, at CCAP, um, I was there one Saturday um, uh, doing some work, and I happened to go back to the food pantry area. And it surprised the heck out of me that uh, one of our members was back there working. I had no idea that uh, she, she volunteered for CCAP, but there she was, that was such, such a bonus to see that. Um, and also, uh, we had a group from Braddock Street uh, come down to uh, uh, CCAP uh, one day, and they performed all this work, uh, cleaning, um, just doing all kinds of things. And their contributions were really appreciated by the, by the CCAP people, and I really appreciated that. And um, I, I tried to let them know that they were appreciated. But that's just so wonderful. For someone who's thinking about giving their, for the first time, or increasing their pledge, what I would consider, what I would say to them, is two things. One, don't just consider your money, consider your service as well, because that is so very critical. Some people have perhaps more money than others, but we all have time. We all have have skills and services that we can donate and, and use for the betterment of our church. And that's so very important. But also on, on, on money, it's very important to give. We cannot do what we need to do without money. Coming from the pandemic where we didn't do much and now we're starting to do a lot, we have uh, an increase in membership, we have an increase in uh, attendance and worship service, uh, we have an increase in our programs, but we can't do a whole lot without money. And that is so, so critical, so important.
Thanks to our band, thanks to all of our musicians uh, for leading us in worship this morning. As I said, we are beginning a new worship series today entitled Balance. We're going to be looking at all the different aspects of our lives and how God wants us to keep things in perspective. Today we're going to talk about our relationships with God, our family, and our friends. Let us pray together. God, you love us in a way that um, is beyond our comprehension. You love us unconditionally. So we come to you to receive that love. Speak to us your promise of new life in Christ. And may we share that same kind of love with everyone in our lives. In Christ's name, amen. We'll just start right in with one of these verses we already read this morning. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. I cannot read those words without thinking of Abraham Lincoln. As I researched that quote, of course, he was just quoting from Scripture. The, the context in which he spoke it was in an acceptance speech. He had just been nominated by the Republicans in the state of Illinois to be their candidate for, uh, for senator. Long before the Civil War, actually two years before the Civil War actually happened, this is when he spoke those words in a sense sadly yet prophetically because what he was saying was every public debate every political discussion is around this issue of slavery and it's going to tear us apart and we know what happened a nation could not be held together and a family cannot be held together in the midst of warring factions and that's kind of what we want to deal with today it's not just that we can't see the same way we're not on the same page underneath it all we may not even have the same solid foundation that is necessary for us to hold our homes together uh, here's a picture of a house uh, this one was in Clark County Virginia um, this is the result of what is called a sinkhole now don't anybody lose sleep tonight this happens very very rarely and when it does it usually happens very gradually what I didn't know was in our church at the 845 service was an attorney who is now retired who represented the family in this case. <laughs> this case, actually, there was groundwater that had been drilled for, and after the water was taken out, the rock and soil above it, you know, now there's a void underneath, and if it's not stable enough above, geologically speaking, it can sometimes collapse or sink. This house was absolutely sunk into the ground. Um, Jesus says regarding our family relationships, we need that solid foundation, that one rock. It's not just what we do as human beings to construct our homes, right? We do the very best we can, but underneath all of that, there may be things we also need to pay attention to. In our, the context of Jesus' teaching today is in response to people who don't recognize who Jesus is. He's the Son of God. He is God made flesh. He is revealing to the world who God is. And of course, he's doing some amazing things, healing people, casting out demons. And the, even the religious leaders don't recognize that he is God, or at least even an agent of God. And so they accuse him of being or having Beelzebul. Um, Lindsay asked me if she could read that in the voice of Bohemian Rhapsody this morning. I don't know how that would have worked. You're bolder than I am. But um, the name, you, if you look at the root of it, if you've read the Old Testament a lot, you know that there was the one true God, Yahweh, for Israel, and then there were the gods of the people who were already living there before they went to inherit the Promised Land. Um, their gods, the prince god, was Baal. And that's in the root of Beelzebul. It literally means prince of gods. Now, over time, obviously, this is a competing God. Israel then kind of demonized the other God, and he became another name for the devil, or as Jesus mentions him, Satan. Satan first appears in the Old Testament in the book of Job. But the problem, of course, is they're not recognizing Jesus even as divine. Not even good, but representing something evil. So here's his response to them in verses 28 through 30. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin, for they had said, he has an unclean spirit. They have looked at what is divine and named it as evil, because they were blind to the, 
reality of Jesus, that gives me pause that, and by the way, this is the only time in the Bible that an unforgivable sin is mentioned. A lot of people will ask me, is there such a thing? And there's one mention, that's it. And it's something that they did unintentionally. They were blind to who Jesus is, and that gives me pause because it's some of the things that I don't know where I might get in trouble, right? In serious, deep trouble. Of course, the problem with the accusation is they're naming God as something that is evil, and for that, it has eternal consequences. Even Jesus' own family doesn't fully recognize who Jesus is. Even though in the biblical stories, Mary's given an idea of who Jesus is. Here, they come, they rush to Jesus because they've been told, Jesus is going out of his mind. You need to come do something about it. And when they tell Jesus that his family is outside, here's his response in verses 33 through 35. Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Jesus redefines the root of family, the foundation. It is those who do the will of God. You hear that? This then becomes for us the bottom line. How we relate to one another as friends, as family, in all of our relationships, undergirding it all, we seek to do the will of God. That is Jesus' definition. A house divided against itself cannot stand. So building our family relationships and those of our friends on our relationship with God is the foundation of everything. It puts us on the same page. At the very least, it helps prevent fracture as we move forward. Before you can do the will of God, of course, you have to know the will of God, and we'll get into a little bit about how to do that a little bit later. But first, just think about the power of this. What are the evil things that families and friends might do to one another? the balance or the contrast of good and evil of course in families and friendships there's no room for evil there's no room for abuse physical abuse verbal abuse there's no room for unfaithfulness dishonesty mishandling finances addictions taking advantage of one another I've even seen this in families taking advantage of others um, one example is when I hear from people my age who have adult children in their 20s, in their 30s, still living at home and not even looking for a job. I can't imagine that. Fortunately, I'm blessed with wonderful kids, but I just think, how can you take advantage of someone like that? And what are the good things, in contrast, that can hold our relationships together? Honesty, unconditional love, respect, acts of love and support for one another, especially in crisis. Notice that in crisis, we have this shared experience. We've been through a difficult time as a church, right? We're kind of closer together now because we've been through things like a pandemic and the denominations, episodes of disaffiliation as people fuss over this and that. Those of us who remain are drawn closer together, aren't we? As we support one another through all of this. Notice that these good things that we do in our friendships and our families, these are all Christian ideals, aren't they? Ideas and practices that we learn most of all from God. It is God who shapes us and molds us so that our character can then show the love of God in others. There's also balancing our time that um, not only in our relationship with God but with our families that is called, called for within the scriptures. Here's another passage from 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 2. This is one that help keep me in balance as a pastor because it's directed first to clergy. Now a bishop must be above reproach, married only once, temperate, sensible, respectable, hospitable, an apt teacher, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, and not a lover of money. He must manage his own household well, keeping his children submissive and respectful in every way. And if someone does not know how to manage, for if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how can he take care of God's church? It's expected of clergy. It's expected of others. The chapter goes on to mention women and deacons of the church as well. I kind of have to back up, though. When we're talking about children, I'm not sure submissive is the word we're looking for here. Um, obedient, maybe. But um, I go back to the biblical adage, what, you reap what you sow. 
In other words, if you want your children to look like this, then you treat your children like this. Kids, by the way, if you want your parents to look like this, treat your parents like this, right? You can go with the good and the bad. If you want, imagine if you're a parent and you, if, and you witness in ways of hitting, in ways of dishonesty, lack of respect, not listening to your children. If you tell your children they're bad, what kind of children do you think you're going to end up with? And kids, I can say you can do the same thing with your parents, right? If you don't treat your parents with respect, what kind of parents do you think you're going to get, right? Likewise, using the model of Jesus, the foundation of God's love, if you show unconditional love, if you show respect, if you take time to listen, if you're intentional spending time with one another, parents, what kind of kids do you think you'll have? Kids, what kind of parents do you think you'll have if you show them respect? and listen to them as well. Notice that these are Christian ideals. Jesus says the bottom line of those who are my mother, my brothers, my sisters, whoever does the will of God. Now here's the trick. You have to do work to know the will of God, don't you? We cannot presume to know how God would take care of a certain situation if we have not grounded ourselves in our relationship with God. When I thought about that this week, I went right back to the founder of Methodism, John Wesley, and what he talked about, means of grace. Spending time with God first in prayer. You can't really have a good relationship with somebody if you don't talk to them very often, do you? He mentions searching the scriptures, spending time in Bible study, listening to what God might be saying to you, receiving the Lord's Supper, and for us in modern times, of course, he was a priest of the Church of England. They had communion every single week. That meant attending worship. He encouraged fasting, doing without something like food for a period of time so that you might more fully appreciate not only that, but the God who has given that to you. He mentioned Christian conferencing, which in modern terms is gathering together in small groups, right? Where we get to not only listen to one person talk on a Sunday morning, but we get to go back and forth say, this is what is going on in my life. How do you deal with that with a group of trusted friends? I would add a couple things to that list. Service to others would be one. Spending time in community service. You heard Bob Brock talk about CCAP, the Congregational Community Action Project, which deals with the needs of people in our community. When you spend time yourself doing that, it's not just that you're helping someone else. You are being changed in the process, right? You get to know neighbors maybe that you wouldn't normally meet. You get to see people at a more basic human level and the needs that we all have and the needs that we all share. It changes who you are. I would also add your giving. Your giving shapes you as well. Your financial giving. It makes you into a more generous person as well as gives you more appreciation for all the things that God has given to you. We have to spend time doing these things in order that we might grow closer to God. If you spend all that time in prayer, in worship, in Bible study, sharing with others, it's going to change you. The Holy Spirit over time is going to change you until that becomes a part of your character and then you, as Jesus said, begin to do the will of God. The scripture, as I said, mentions responsibilities in our, in our, French, in our family relationships. We have to spend time with that. We have to be intentional with that, just as we have to be intentional with our relationship with God. I would also encourage you to be intentional with your friendships as well. Um, parents with small kids, you're spending a lot of time with each other. You are very, very busy. You need some people to just go, ah, with, right? I've been there, I know. Um, all of us need that. Outside of our families, it's, a, it's another pedestal, if you will, of support for our human spirit for our mental health. And that means intentionally spending time. So maybe it's once a week with a friend. Meet him for coffee. Maybe it's, you know, once a month, sharing time with another couple if you're married. Uh, maybe it's just once a year. I realized this year as I was writing this, and, oh, there was a friend I didn't connect with in Roanoke this, this past year. United Methodists do this thing called annual conference. Uh, Every pastor and a lay representative from every church gathers together annually, hence the name. Um, and we have it in different places in Virginia. Whenever we have it in Roanoke, I go visit a friend of mine, meet him for lunch or meet him for dinner or something. And I'll tell you, that's a relationship that has gone on since we were in confirmation class together as 12-year-olds. 
Um, that's a very important relationship in my life, a deep friendship. But what I'm saying is you have, kind of have to be intentional. Maybe build a routine there that we're going to meet such and such. We're going to play cards together. Yeah, it needs to be something fun, right? Just so you can go, ah, and laugh, and smile, and enjoy life. Um, kind of looking around the room. Uh-oh. Not sure. I, well, I'll go ahead and say it anyway. Um, I have a group of friends that gather regularly. Um, it's been more difficult lately, I have to confess. Some of us have moved away. But when we were meeting regularly, one of them got the idea that we should shoot a potato cannon. If you don't know what that is, I'm not going to go too deep because there are little ears in the room who may, at some point in their life, decide they want to build one. Um, so I'm not going to even tell you what it is, other than it shoots a potato out of a pipe. Just to hear something go boom and watch a projectile go, hopefully someplace safe, because we chose a big lake so we wouldn't hurt anybody. And we laughed, and we laughed so hard, and we couldn't wait to do the next time. Everybody get a turn. It was just so much fun. And it had nothing to do. We were all preachers. It had nothing to do with what we do for a living. <laughs> but it became a fun, shared experience, right? And we have been with each other for years, actually decades, and we have supported one another through some very difficult personal times, personal things that clergy could not share with their congregation. Yes, we have family, we have issues, we have stuff that goes on, just like your own family. We needed that, a chance to laugh, so that when things got hard, we could also just be there for one another in no formal way. We need those relationships outside the family. A couple of weeks ago, um, actually four weeks ago, the Downtown Clergy Fellowship met. This is the pastors of Braddock Street, pastor of First Pres, and in the city and a few just on the fringes of the city. We call it the Downtown Clergy Fellowship. We meet once a month. Uh, this time there was a particular agenda. We wanted to say goodbye to Dan McCoy, who is the pastor at First Presbyterian. Actually, he retired two weeks ago. We were celebrating his retirement together. And uh, one of the groups said, so Dan, do you have any advice for the rest of us as you, as you retire? And he said, yeah. During your ministry, spend time making friends with people outside the congregation. And somebody said, oh, you mean our heathen friends. Yeah. <laughs> well, the point is simply we build relationships here all the time, right? And we could spend all of our relationship. But Dan now has to leave ministry and make room for somebody to lead in his place. If all of his relationships are only with the congregation, where does he go now for those relationships, right? Our families are like that too. We need those extra friendships, those extra relationships. We know, need all the support we can get, all of which, by the way, are grounded in that relationship with God. Spending time. I go back to that illustration, that picture of the house. It's not just the foundation that we build with our own hands. There may be something deep and subterranean that we need to deal with. We need all the support we can get. Mainly, we need that relationship with God. Spending time with God to know and to do the will of God so that we can love the people that are dearest to us in the same way that God loved us in Jesus Christ. A house divided cannot stand. And that's the foundation that God provides for us, the love of Christ. Let us pray. God, thank you for loving us the way you do. Thank you for always being an ear for us in prayer. Thank you for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ. May we never take that for granted. And Lord, help us not only to know what your will is, but to do your will with acts of love in every place we can. All of these prayers we also say in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who has taught us to pray as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now stand as we are able as we sing together, Arise, my soul, arise.
Thank you for joining us this morning for worship. Thanks to those of you online. Um, as you go out, the, out of the sanctuary this morning, as you go to your left, you'll notice our United Women in Faith, our women's groups, have some goodies for sale. They're raising missions for raising money for missions like missionary support and so forth. All good causes, we promise. They are also beginning today collecting calendars, 2024 calendars between now and the end of the year. If you're like me, I only have digital anymore. So if you get a calendar in the mail, if you have some unused birthday or Christmas cards, they would like to have them. They're going to share them with people at uh, the Veterans Administration Hospital in Martinsburg, West Virginia. So that's also right outside the door. But now go with the knowledge of the will of God, hopefully, that you have found in Jesus Christ. May you share that same love with the people in your family and your friendships, everyone you meet. Go with the blessing of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.